Hello everyone, I'm DW, and welcome to my Let's Play of Orcs Must Die. First up, we're going to uh, create a new profile. We're just going to call it DW3, because, you know, I'm boring. And yeah, we're just going to jump right into the first level. You can see the controls here. You can't rebind them inside the game. You have to actually, like, create, like, a separate file and do it that way. It's a real pain in the ass, but the controls are fine. They're great. We, we won't have to do that. So here's a cutscene. I've spent 300 years fighting for the Order. I've killed thousands of orcs. And defended dozens of rifts. And this is how it ends. One slip and a kobold's blood. And my skull cracks open on the gatehouse steps. So now the task of defending this fortress falls to my... Apprentice. That's it, then. The world is doomed. It's all up to me now. Rest well, crazy old man. First things first. Let's see what he left me in this spellbook. Alright, before we open our spellbook, this is the rift. We have to prevent orcs from getting there. That's where the orcs are going to come out. On this level, we have some helpful archer guardians, but I'll talk more about that later. And we have some entirely useless acid pits. So let's open our spellbook. Uh, first you'll see that uh, we can't unequip our crossbow, but we wouldn't want to because the crossbow is great. Um, next up we have the blade staff, which I'll probably never use because it's kind of awful. Uh, here you can see we only have three empty slots. And uh, the spike traps and the tar traps are your default weapons. Uh, and all the other items here are DLC items. We will be using the DLC items, as I said in the opening of the thread, and we're going to start off by using the Alchemist Satchel, and we're going to take the Spike Trap and the Tar Trap with us. Uh, I also should mention that on this level, we only have t uh, Orc Warriors to deal with. So let's get some traps down. For this first level, we're primarily just going to be using Spike Traps. The Tar Traps are fantastic, but, well, the Alchemist Satchel is just so useful. Alright, let's press G to begin. We're going to start off by throwing out some Alchemist Satchel, and basically what that will do is it will explode when it's hit by any sort of physics trap, like the spikes, or like the uh, War Mage's crossbow bolt, or an archer's arrow, or an enemy's uh, crossbow bolt. You can see here that uh, headshots deal so much more damage, they'll take out these little guys in one hit and are the, like, principal way of dealing damage in this game, at least with your... without using mana. Alright, so in between waves is the only time that we can sell traps. Right now you can see we have a countdown timer that will automatically start the next wave. In the future there's going to be some break waves where we'll have all the time in the world to buy and sell traps, but for now we just have to deal with countdown timers. So you can see what I'm trying to do right now is shoot the Alchemist Satchel, but I miss and it's set off by the Spike Traps. Now of course I never miss, as I'm sure you can tell. Always headshot master, especially when they're super close to me. <laughs> Getting headshots in this game is actually a little wonky. You kind of have to aim a above their heads. I think there's either some fall off from the crossbow bolt or um, or it's just like the bolt spawns from not where the cursor is. I don't know. It's a little weird. It takes some getting used to. So I'm sure you can tell that the bombs from the Alchemist Satchel are fantastic. They just have such a large a AoE and it's just amazing. It makes this level and so many other levels, well, I wouldn't say insignificant, but it certainly makes them a little bit easier to deal with. So now we got our floor all covered with spikes, and yeah, we're at the last wave, so uh, you can see there I can shoot the Alchemist Satchel right out of the sky. It, that, that actually can be useful at times, but it's mostly just the style. Cool. 
So if you rapidly flick when attacking with the crossbow, you'll get an incredibly inaccurate shot. This can be sort of useful on uh, some of the bigger enemies, although it's generally better to use uh, weapons that cost mana that will stun them or keep them in a single place where you can then rip down their health with uh, headshots. This is the last group of guys, and when I was playing this I didn't really realize that, so I decided to uh, put down some tar traps. This is actually kind of a common thing with this game, you get really invested in the level that you don't realize that you're actually at the very end of it. And uh, as long as we kill this one guy, there we go. You can see he does his little five skull victory dance there. There's a little eyebrow thing. And there we have it. I got an awful score, but we'll check out our stats. You can see the amount of skulls you get is determined by how many rift points you have left and if you do it under the part time. Score is a bit is determined in a bit different way, but we'll get to that when we get to that. It's not really that important. Anyway, I've been DW. Thank you for watching.